Welcome back to History in Motion, proudly brought to you by Midas. Henry Ford had wanted a car at Le Mans since the early 60s, and the Ford GT40 was it. It was produced to be a Le Mans winner, which it did with great success in 1968 and 1969, and became the first car in Le Mans history to win the race more than once with the same chassis. The 40 represents the height of the car at 40 inches. The SK of Pre-66 and 84 Sports and GTs were the last class to take to the grid at this action-packed round of the Midas Historic Tour. But before they headed onto the track, we caught up with Kubis Pritz. It used to be Armand Pinar's car that he uh, raced in the, his saloons. So I bought it a couple of months ago from, uh, from a friend. And it's just great fun. It's not the same as the 911, but uh, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. So I'm just going to enjoy it. We had to push the car quite hard because the car's been uh, fitted with handicap tyres to slow the car down. In the last race, uh, towards the end, it blew a head gasket and uh, took a bit of strain and we lost a bit of time, we lost a few positions as well. And uh, now it's just all been refreshed and re and all set up again, so tomorrow should be uh, a diabolical race uh, on the handicap tyres versus the other cars with the slick tyres. The tyres actually slow the car down, slow the driver down uh, because of the power of the car and makes it more competitive with the rest of the competitors. They're so quick around here because they're so light. But uh, hopefully with the work we've done on the car, we've got some decent brakes in it now. So maybe I can uh, just hang on to the back of him and then push the last few laps. We've changed the whole brake system, upgraded, so we're looking forward to the race. Jonathan Dutoy in his Chevron BA takes pole position. Alongside him is the Chevron B19 of Peter Jenkins. Colin Frost and Oliver DeLay fill up the second row. 10th, 11th and 12th on the grid are filled up with the Cobras of Keith Hinckley, Alan Garrow and Gary Swan. The grid are lined up in formation, ready to take the green light. They head onto the main straight. The lights go on. The lights go off and the field put the power down as they accelerate into turn one. Detoy edging ahead of Jenkins. Dennis McBeath in his MPT Sport spins on the main straight. He turns himself round and rejoins the race. He will have his work cut out for him. Into Red Xcon and Detoy manages to stay ahead of Jenkins. Oliver Delay in his grey GT40 has the yellow Porsche 934 of Andre van der Merwe piling the pressure on. George Avakomides is pushing hard looking for a way past Fred Koenig as they head towards speed and sound sweep. Koenig exits ahead of Avakomides as the leaders race through Castrol Corner. Oliver Delay ahead of Andre van der Merwe. The field seem to have settled into their positions. Climbing the hill and Delay runs wide onto the gravel, but keeps the power down and rejoins the track just ahead of van der Merwe. The battle is now on. Coming up to Sassel and the Porsche and the GT40 are side by side. Andre van der Merwe moves ahead of Oliver Delay. Neil Lobb in the Gunston Lola T70 leaves Delay and van der Merwe into BMW Performance Parts. The Porsche 934 and the GT40 are giving it their all as they race towards Renexcon. Delay on the outside keeps the power down and the GT40 edges ahead of the Porsche as they go round the hairpin. Heading towards turn three and the Porsche 917 of Colin Frost passes Andre van der Merwe as well. On the main straight in the back cover of the MPT Sports flies up. Dennis McBeath not having the best of days. Barry Nell in his Dats and Stanza is pushing hard behind Willem Britz in his Porsche 924 and Colin Green in his Mazda 323. Heading towards Kenwood and there's nothing in it between these three drivers. Britz leaves the trio towards turn seven with Nell slotting in behind Green. Cobra versus Cobra as Alan Garrow and Keith Hinckley race up to Sassel. They're neck and neck through the corner towards Kenwood. Garrow edges ahead. George Avakomides having some problems with his car is slowing as Fred Koenig passes him. Jeffrey Kruger in the Chef Camaro leads Andre van der Merwe in the yellow Porsche through turn four. Climbing the hill and van der Merwe has a look down the inside of Kruger. He isn't close enough and pulls back in behind the Camaro. Van der Merwe has another look as they come into Sassel. Side by side the Camaro and Porsche race. Other comedians gets out of his car and will have to watch the rest of the race from the sidelines. Jonathan Detoy, meanwhile, is coming up on some traffic as he makes his way past Ben van der Vestes and in his Marauder. Peter Jenkins in second place is making his way past Barry Nell. He thanks the dance and stands as driver and races on. Willem Britz makes way for Jeffrey Kruger and Andre van der Merwe as the two pass him on their way through Renexcon. Peter Jenkins, who had fended off Neil Lobb for most of the race, was eventually bettered as Lobb passes Jenkins down the inside of Castrol Corner. 
the red and white Cobra of Keith Hinckley leads the second place battle of Neil Lobb and Peter Jenkins to start another lap as they make their way through turn one and onto turn two. Jenkins pushing hard, looking for a pass to the Lola T70. Lobb and Jenkins lap Hinckley as they continue with their battle. Coming through Castrol Corner and Jenkins sees the orange Lola spinning off the track and onto the gravel. It looks like Lobb has overcooked it and gone off. Jonathan Detoy comes round GNH Transport for the last time, and the chequered flag will be waiting for him as he takes victory in race one. The crowd on the wall, cheer him on. Coming through to take second place is a clearly elated Peter Jenkins. Colin Frost and Oliver DeLay are going to take it to the line as they still battle for third place. It looks like Frost has done enough as he crosses the line in just under five tenths of a second ahead of Oliver DeLay. Confirmation of the results, and it was a comfortable victory for Jonathan Dutoy with a margin of over six seconds on Jenkins. Andre von der Merwe edged out Shane Frost by just over one-tenth of a second. Wow, the first race we'd redone brakes and I was very excited, everything was working very well. And uh, on the last lap, going into turn four, the pedal just went down to the floor. So rather scary, but I'm glad there was no damage done. And uh, with a bit of adjustment that we did on the car, so looking forward to going ahead from here. Had a good first race for the first couple of laps and the car got stuck in fourth gear. And, and I tried hard for three laps to keep Neil behind me. But eventually I thought, no, this is going to end in tears somewhere. So let me, let, me, uh, let him pass. He was quicker than me. As soon as he got past me, he pulled away. But I was just so glad to have uh, uh, finished up well. Neil handed me second place on the plate. Race two gets underway and the drivers are prepared for some more close racing. At the front, things are very close with not much in it between the top four. Keith Hinckley and Alan Garra look set to resume the Battle of the Cobras. Cresting the hill into turn five, and Neil Lobb is successfully making his way up the field after his retirement from race one as he passes Andre van der Merwe and sets off in chase for Oliver Delay. Into Renix Khan and Kubis Brits in his Datsun Triple S leads Ben van der Vestes in the Marauder with the Datsun stands of Barry Nell hot on his heels. Heading through speed and sound sweep, Nell pushing hard looking for a pass van der Vestes, and, but he isn't able to find one just yet. Keith Hinckley leads George of Acomedes and Alan Garrow through Castrol Corner. Of Acomedes trying to make up for his DNF in race one. Running side by side with Garrow as they climb up to the top of the track. The Cobra is pushing hard and the Porsche is still looking for a way past Garrow. Powering through to Kenwood and the Cobra and Porsche are side by side. Of Acomedes is the inside line and moves ahead of Garrow and accelerates through to turn seven. Colin Frost and Neil Lubber side by side heading through Sassol. The Lola and the Porsche giving it their all. Neil Lobb moves ahead of Colin Frost and leads the Porsche 917 into Kenwood. Andre van der Merwe has moved right up onto the back of Colin Frost. Jeffrey Kruger has retired the Chef Camaro coming out of turn one. Barry Nell having a good race, looking for a way past Richard van Zell on the Alpha as they head into Renningscon. The Dancer moving ahead as they exit the hairpin and he will now try to catch up to Ben van der Verstezen. Peter Jenkins in the yellow Chevron B19 is pushing hard, looking for a way past the red Chevron B8 of Jonathan Dutoy. They run side by side into Sassol. Jenkins exits slightly ahead of Dutoy, but Dutoy fights back. Into Kenwood, and it looks like Jenkins has made it stick. Up to the tabletop, and Jenkins is still ahead of Dutoy, and they are coming up on some back markers. Colin Green and Rechot von Zale stream past Barry Nell, as do Jenkins and Dutoy as they head through turn six and onto turn seven. The Chevron B8 and the Chevron B19 are side by side as they head into Castrol Corner. The red B8 moves ahead and retakes the lead as they climb the hill. Jenkins tries to fight back, but Dutoy manages to keep ahead as they reach the highest point on the track. George of Acomedes is not having a good day and his car smoking badly as he cruises around the track. He will definitely have to retire the Porsche as the smoke is creating a visibility problem to the other drivers on the track. On board with Jenkins as he comes onto the main straight and you can see just how difficult the smoke has made it to see at certain parts of the track. Of Acomedes retires his Porsche between turn one and two and that puts an end to his bad day at the races. Race leader Jonathan Dutoy leads Peter Jenkins through some traffic as they continue their battle for the top spot on the podium. 
coming through turn eight and onto the main straight, it's the Chevron B8 of Jonathan Dutoy who takes the victory. Peter Jenkins follows him over the line just over two seconds later. Neil Lobb took third place with Andre von der Merwe in fourth. Colin Frost took fifth place with Oliver DeLay in sixth position. Great racing in the final race of the day. Uh, Caroline, we've had a, a, a wonderful day. It's the first time I've ever got the Chevron to be able to run with the, the front guys, with the likes of Jono and, and, and Neil. Um, I think Neil and I both had our problems in the first race. I got stuck in, in fourth gear. Um, but now in the, in the second race, just with a wonderful pass with, uh, with Jonathan. So it was, it was really, really good. I had a good start. Uh, I put my head down, but uh, Peter was coming with me. Then uh, there started to be a little bit of oil on the track, so I backed it off a bit and Peter got past me. And then I think there was a white porch that let go of property and probably drove probably another two laps. So in, in that process, I decided, you know what, either I'm going to spin off or I'm going to win this one. So I, I decided you know, I don't care if there's oil down. So I just got ahead and put my head down and uh, managed to John is a, is a very nice driver to race against. You know, he's not, not scared to go into the corner alongside you, but uh, also if he sees that you're coming, he gives you lots of space. It was, was, was wonderful to race with him. But of course, the whole time we had this orange thing growing in our mirrors. Yeah, you know, I had a great race, but I'm not very happy. They were supposed to wait for me, but obviously the message didn't get through to them. So uh, I don't know if the car ran on his team or I ran on his team. I think it was me in the last couple of laps. Um, it was a great race. I'm just sorry I wasn't up there with him from the beginning. It didn't start very well. In qualifying, I think, the second lap, the linkage of the accelerator broke. Uh, in the second lap, I didn't manage to get a, a timing, so I had to start at the back of class, and then uh, mechanics put it together. Unfortunately, it didn't last longer than, I think, four laps in the first race. So we didn't get any points today. Second race, something went in the engine. Don't know what, but it's smoking terribly. I wasn't aware, I'm so embarrassed. I wasn't aware of the smoke, but apparently, you know, it was a cloud over the track. I was pulled off by the marshals, and it seems that the engine has a problem. We have to look at it. But all in all, you know, that's racing. What can we do? We'll be back. History in Motion is proudly brought to you by Midas Sport, Gumtree, Mitsubishi Electric and their associated sponsors. The next round of the Midas Historic Tour will be at Pakisa Raceway on Saturday 4 July. Join us at the track.